Hello, everybody. Hi. Turn my mic up. There we go. There we go. I'm Sean Blevins. I lead North America and I'm uh, Global CRO for Perpetuity. And I don't want to raise the bar too high, but I'm here to save the world. Is that okay for everybody? And I'm going to do that in five minutes, which is a new record. Um, anybody here come over from the UK? Anybody? You know, several of you. We'll try going back, okay? Because last night, the single database went down. And when that single database went down, nobody could get in the UK. They literally put it on, uh, uh, took the terrorist list, put it on about 150 laptops there, and uh, started passing it out for their agents to try and get people through manually. And the lines went for miles outside of every airport in the UK. Y'all heard this story? That was last night, all right? So I'm here today to talk about that. These are great companies, absolutely great companies. Southwest, AT&T, United Health, You've all heard these stories, MGM, anyone not heard any of these stories? They all had tools and teams and resilience software. They had the best people in the world doing business continuity. Why does it keep happening to them? Why did it happen in the UK last year? Why does it keep happening? I'll tell you, I'll see if people need to say the world there. So the point is, there's a simple technical glitch. No terrorists came and did anything to these UK airports, right? Nobody happened at AT&T. A guy just simply uploaded the wrong thing and started bouncing across the country. But it impacted, um, it impacted T-Mobile, it impacted Verizon. Now they're getting sued, $460 million. We saw that this week. But then you take Southwest. Southwest had one simple program. They put flight attendants and pilots together on a plane so they could fly. And they hadn't went over there a lot of time to fly. One simple 30-year-old COBOL program. Cost them $600 million back to their customers. And then, on top of that, on this slide, they got fined $140 million by the Consumer Safety Commission for not being service to customers. About a million bucks altogether for one teeny tiny man-made glitch. The truth is, the truth is you've got 60 seconds. You've got 60 seconds to figure out what's going on, and you've got less than an hour to fix it before what, what happens. CNBC gets a hold of it. Reuters gets a hold of it. The government gets a hold of it. And then it's out of your hands, right? The truth is human beings can't do that. They just can't do it. We write our run books, we write our plans, we put things in our CMDB about where everything sits, and then when something goes wrong, by the time we even figure out what's going wrong, it's longer than an hour. So you need a very special AI and a very special contextual understanding, generative AI, in practice. Not some generic, you know, I can write you know, beautiful text, but something that works when you need it to tell you, this is the problem, I want to solve it, I want to do it right now. No one in here can name all of the IP addresses and all the server commands and everything else. You need to have something that can do that for you. Gartner calls it VR theater, right? That when you get to that point there, none of this is going to actually help you work. So I want to introduce you today to something we call Continuity Patrol 6.0. It is an automation for both cyber resiliency, so bringing things out of the vault and giving you a new, a new version of your software if you get attacked, which is what happens right now at United Health. They've been trying for two months to get their stuff back up, but they don't have a pristine copy. It's what's happening across all these companies because they don't have a brain. They don't have someone to talk to. Everyone here can run the software because on the right side of that, you're going to meet some people named Lisa and Dave. Lisa stands for Live Incident Service Advisor, and Dave stands for Disaster Automation um, Value Engineer, right? So what we've done in our company across the last 13 years and across 500 enterprise customers, we have created libraries, ID libraries. Those libraries allow you for any technology, for any vendor, to cut and paste. Everybody remember Windows when it took over the world? Remember when Lotus 123 and WordPerfect and Harbor Graphics were things that were selling? You don't hear those names anymore because at some point you could cut and paste. Well, in the infrastructure, there's been no OS. There's been no cut and paste. But literally, you could drag and drop for the last 10 years, in our company, 11 years, a workflow, just drag and drop and do that cut and paste. But now the work, the, and who's doing it? That's the question. Is it real? That's what people keep asking me. If you land a UFO in somebody's yard, they say, does this, this thing really work? Delta. Delta doesn't have the problems that Southwest and United has, but they actually do. They actually have the exact same problems. They just cover them inside that 60 minute window, right? So they can go over and they have the courage and the conviction to pull 
that plug out of the wall and bounce it wherever they need to go, and the workflow is just run. Here's a, here's a fact. Since 2019, when we put this in, it moved from zero cancel flights since 2019. Five years, they went from 50 people to five, and 83% reduction in RTO. So now we have Lisa and Dave. Lisa and Dave, you literally speak to them in plain English, and Dave writes the workflows. Lisa tells you what's going on. Hey, Lisa, how'd the last drill go? And we've taken human beings out in favor of giving you the conviction and courage to act. So that is what we do. Leaving you with what I heard, this, I heard the best quote today, this morning, which was, AI is not going to take your job. Someone using AI is going to take your job. That's what you see there. You're either going to be the chief resilience officer who knows how to use AI, or you're going to be looking for a job. So you've got to make that choice. People are the reason these things keep happening. Generative AI, proven across 500 companies is the reason and how we fix it. Thanks, Phil. So, uh, round of applause for Sean. Hey. I have some questions from our wonderful show. So who's going first? Oh, um, so we know that the cybersecurity landscape is becoming more complex. Um, how do you envision this landscape moving in the next kind of you know three, five years? And how will your organization remain relevant within that? That's a huge question. It's a great question. There was a great 60 Minutes documentary uh, show about two weeks ago. went through all the hacking and the cyber attacks and everything else. Mm -hmm. And what happens was, they had well-spoken English American people who could go in and do a social engineering attack in uh, the tech world and, you know, hey, I'm down here, I just need your password. But the minute they get the password, they went over to the Russians who had AI, <coughs> a bad AI, that would then go through all the systems, map everything, and figure out where all the, all the, so that's continuing. We see the bad guys using AI, mm -hmm. and because they understand that complexity is more than one human can do. So, no matter how good these companies are, without our ability to go in there and look in real time and monitor, because you can't monitor, you can't manage, that's what's missing. We have to be able to see everything in each nuance and each interdependency as it occurs, or the hackers are just going to out-hack you. So the, the real challenge as we go forward is their tools are going to be AI-based, and they're going to be better, and we, you know, nobody wants to be behind, but with trying to get this done without generative AI, without Lisa and Dave telling you what's going on, you're always behind. You just that you just it's impossible to keep up with the complexity. So what do you do? What, how will your organization support in the future as well? Uh, I'm sorry. So how will your organization support the companies that are dealing with these threats? Uh, well, so the first thing we do is we're, we we have a global partnership with Dell for cyber recovery. So if something happens, and this is really important in these <coughs> days, because if people spend millions of dollars trying to keep people out, I've yet to see anybody be successful. So once they get in, what do you do? You gotta go to your vault, you gotta get a clean room out, you gotta make that, you know, if, if, if a nuclear bomb drops, you're done. Unless you have a clean copy that's pristine. So we automate that, we keep it safe, we, don't, we air gap it, and we would bring that out. And that's one of the newest capabilities, is to build cyber resilience, not just uh, application continuity, but actually resilience for the entire uh, environment. Yeah. And how do you differentiate yourself amongst your competitors? Oh, well, you'll have to name one. I mean, Sonobi used to do this and they quit. Uh, Kindle used to do it and they quit. So right now, um, there's guys that, there's, there's some great companies that will document what human beings should do, right? They'll write really sexy run books and really incredible uh, CMDPs and processes and people. The problem is when something happens, nobody has the guts to go over there and pull it off the wall because the automation and the execution is different you know, Mike, uh, Mike Tyson, right, everybody has a plan to like, get hit in the mouth. That's very much the case, right? When that happens, it, nobody is even willing to go tell the CEO we should pull the plug, right? Because no one's clear that they can make the journey there and back. Now, overseas, we have 150 global banks, and they are required with DORA and other requirements to not only make that trip, but if an auditor comes in, prove it, and live in the off-site for 90 days or longer, running in production. So that has to occur and in the U.S. it's just now starting to appear. The SEC just passed a law that said you have to report all your averages that are more than four uh, hours in your, in your earnings. Uh, but overseas, you're out, you lose 2% of your global revenue, and your CEO, he might go to jail. So it's a whole different ball game. Those mandates are coming in. Okay, guys, um, thank you, Sean. I thank you. <laughs>